several months ago, I had the opportunity to meet Matt Chandler in person in Anaheim, California uh, at a conference. It was a nine marks um, panel discussion. Matt Chandler was there with several other pastors. Mark Deaver was there as well. Matt Chandler is a very knowledgeable individual sound um, in his doctrine, his preaching as a massive church. But I will say one thing I noticed about Matt Chandler when I saw him, he seemed a little apathetic, like he was a little tired of the pressure and the weight of ministry. He's a ambitious guy, and I could see it on him even, even then. This is to say that Matt Chandler, as you all know, has recently stepped down from lead pastor of his church. I'm going to play this clip. I'm going to react to it, give my assessment. So stick around and I'll be right back. Yeah, love you. Hey, guys. It, I know it, it just feels like, oh, my gosh, what's coming? So so let me I'm I'm the lead pastor of this church. I plan on being the lead pastor of this church for the next 20 years. Um, but I do need to. It's harder seeing you. <sighs> Several months ago, um, a woman approached me um, outside here in the foyer. Um, she had some concerns for how I was DMing on Instagram with a friend of hers. Um, I, I didn't think I had done anything wrong in that. My wife knew that. Her husband knew that. Um, and, and yet there were a couple of things that she said that were disorienting to me. Um, and so I immediately um, came into the room. I found Chairman of the Elder Board, Jason Swords, found Josh Patterson, other lead pastor, and said, this is what this person just told me. Uh, and then I went home. Lauren wasn't with me that night. And I told Lauren, this is what was said to me um, tonight. Um, from there, uh, the elders began to look into, because that's what they're supposed to do. Uh, because we cannot be a church where anyone uh, is above the scriptures and above the high heavenly call uh, into Christ Jesus. And so they looked into um, the, the conversation between me and um, this other woman, uh, and they had some concerns. Um, and those concerns were not that our messaging was romantic or sexual, it was that our conversations were unguarded and unwise. And because I don't ever want there to be secrets between us, the concerns were really about frequency and familiarity. We believe in brother-sister relationships here. Um, and yet there was a frequency that moved past that. And there was a familiar familiarity that played itself out in coarse and foolish joking. It's unbefitting uh, of someone in my position as a lead pastor and as an elder, I'm held to a higher standard and fell short of that higher standard. Um, so, so the elders have decided, and I think they're right, that my inability to see what I was in uh, probably has some revealing some unhealth in me. And I don't know if that's tied to the pace I run or uh, the difficulty of the last six, seven years, but I agree with them. Um, and so in their grace to me and my family, um, they've decided, and again, I think they're right, um, to put me on a leave of absence, um, uh, starting uh, immediately from preaching and teaching at um, the village church. If I'm on, I'm just really embarrassed. Feel stupid. Thank you. Feel dumb. I feel like I'm embarrassing my wife and kids, putting a ton of pressure on our staff. I feel like I've fallen short for you. And you might even be hearing, you might not be a Christian, you might be hearing me saying this like, what the H? <laughs> but the word of God holds me to a certain standard. And, and I, need to, I need to live into that. And, and I fell short. And man, I'm, I'm apologizing to my family, to you, to all involved in this situation. And um, I, some things I love. I love that our elders engaged at the level they did. You know how easy this would have been to make it nothing and just let me not address whatever this is? Super grateful that the elders have loved us and walked with us the way that they have. 
um, super grateful for you. I'm super hopeful for what's to come in the future. But, but I need to breathe. Uh, and that's both discipline, both discipline and development. Um, and so, man, in time, forgive me. I love you. Eager for the other side of this, whatever God has for us. And so let me pray for us. Uh, and then Josh will step in and uh, lead us in the service. Wow, wow, wow. First and foremost, man, a lot to say, a lot to get through here. A few things. Number one, I want to commend Pastor Matt Chandler for submitting to the process that his elders and himself as an elder has established at his church, a disciplinary process. It takes a, a man of integrity to do that when you're caught in a situation that is unbecoming of a pastor, but there has to be correction. Correction is part of being a pastor being an elder, we have a high calling on our lives. We, we cannot do things and conduct ourselves in a way that is, as he said, unbefitting of an elder. Right? We, we can't hang out with people that you know, lay people will hang out with or go places or be seen at places. We have to be aware of that. The Bible talks about avoiding the appearance of evil. He said he found himself in a situation with a female friend. Familiarity and frequency. I I understand that there's people at my church who I know, who I see on a regular basis every single Sunday. The frequency, the familiarity can sometimes bring your guard down as a pastor. And sometimes you can just get comfortable with people. That is something that we must be cognizant of as pastors, that we're not getting too comfortable talking to the same person every single week, exchanging numbers and talking. I don't have any of, of the young ladies numbers at my church. I don't have any of their numbers, all right? And I'm going to keep it that way. Although he says they have a brother-sister relationship at his church, same at my church. I see the younger ladies in our church as sisters and the older women as mothers. But still, there is a, a separation, a delineation that I must have as a pastor from the people of the church. I also want to comfort his family. I know his wife, his family, they're going through it right now, and this process is hurtful, right? It's hurtful for his family, his reputation, his church. There's a snowball avalanche effect that comes from one decision. But here's the truth about Matt Chandler. He is a human being. He made a mistake. And as pastors, we have to remember, number one, to live a quiet life, to take it slow, take it easy. We can be ambitious and grow God's kingdom and, and just push back the forces of darkness, but we cannot overdo it. We cannot get so deep and strive so hard and push so hard that we start neglecting our character. We start neglecting our spiritual and emotional health. We start neglecting our physical health to the point where we're making poor decisions and getting ourselves caught up in situations that are completely avoidable. That is why Matt Chandler needs this time of development. He needs this discipline. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12 that God chastens those who he love, and the church should do the same. The church discipline process is not to harm, it's not to hurt, it's not to dunk on people, it's to restore right, a person back to his first love, to repentance. It's about restoration. Some people might think that this is a bit harsh or strict, you know, consequence punishment for Matt Chandler. It doesn't, the punishment doesn't match the crime per se. But that just goes to show you this, the seriousness of the pastorate, of being an elder. This is a serious calling. You know, we are held to a higher standard. So the consequence is tantamount for the crime because the calling is that great. You cannot, we must be above reproach. This is not a disqualifying offense though. Matt Chandler has not been permanently set down he is still the lead pastor of the church. He's still going to be the lead pastor of the church if he so chooses, if he goes through the process. But this is not a disqualifiable offense. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you believe Matt Chandler is doing the right thing by submitting to the process? Do you believe the church wants Matt Chandler to continue to be the lead pastor? Or is this a way for Matt Chandler to slowly slip out and go to a different situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and you want more content like this, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel, like this video, 
I'll be back next week with another one. This is Pastor Frederick. This is By the Book. Peace.